Hi and welcome to PhysioTutors. My name is Kai and uh, today we would like to explain you the basics of uh, osteokinematics. In fact, we would like to explain you how to use planes and axes in order to describe certain movements. For our explanations, we will always start in the anatomic position. The sagittal plane divides the body into right and left sections. The frontal plane is dividing the body into a front and a back section. The transversal or horizontal plane divides the body into an upper and a lower half. When a movement takes place in a plane, bones rotate around an axis of rotation. For example, to describe a movement in a sagittal plane, we are seeing a rotation around or perpendicular to the transversal, also called frontal axis. When we see a movement in the frontal plane, we are describing a rotation around the sagittal axis. And lastly, in the transversal or horizontal plane, we describe a movement around the longitudinal axis. During an inspection of a movement in a certain plane, you should take the following position. Perpendicular to the plane of movement, which means in the extension of the axis around which the movement takes place. To illustrate these concepts, we will give you three examples. Shoulder joint. Before you describe the movement in a joint, you should ask yourself how many levels of freedom this joint has. As a shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint, morphologically and functionally, its level of freedom is three, which means it can move in all three planes. If we are moving the shoulder in a sagittal plane, we are moving around the transversal axis. These movements in the shoulder joint are called flexion or antiversion and extension or retroversion. If we are moving the shoulder in a frontal plane, we are moving around the sagittal axis. These movements are called abduction and adduction. The movements of the shoulder in a transversal plane around the longitudinal axis are called external or lateral rotation and internal or medial rotation. Hip joint. The hip joint is a ball and socket joint as well and therefore has also three degrees of freedom. If we are moving the hip in a sagittal plane, we are moving around the transversal axis. These movements are called flexion and extension. If we are moving the hip in a frontal plane, we are moving around the sagittal axis. These movements are called abduction and adduction. The movements of the hip in the transversal plane around the longitudinal axis are called external or lateral rotation and internal or medial rotation. Knee joint. To give you an example of a joint that does not have all possible three degrees of freedom, we will take the knee joint. The knee joint is morphologically and functionally a hinge joint which means it only has one degree of freedom. It can only move in one plane. The only two movements that can happen in the knee joint are flexion and extension. As we have learned, these two movements always take place in a sagittal plane. The two movements of the frontal plane, which are abduction and adduction, are hardly possible. The two movements of the transversal plane, which are internal and external rotation, are also not possible in the knee joint. This was a short introduction into osteokinematics. If you have any further question, questions, please post a comment below this video. 
And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe our channel. And thank you very much. This uh, has been Kai and Andreas for Physio Tutors.